Hello, and welcome. My name's Tim Shank. And I'm Brian McAvoy. This is Two Cyborgs and a Microphone. Where it's at. What are you drinking today, Tim? Today, it's vodka and soda. Nice. I am drinking a cold brew coffee latte out of my Two Cyborgs and a Microphone mug. Is that microwavable, Brian? It is microwavable. Are you sure? I verified it 10 minutes ago. Excellent. Which means I have 10 minutes of coffee coursing through my veins. And exercise. I just got back from a jog, but we'll get into that next show about why this guy, this cyborg, is jogging. But today, we're talking about Neuralink. Elon Musk, our favorite futurist, has announced plans to invest time and money in a company called Neuralink, which may be producing a product to link us to computers. To do this, he plans to use what he's calling a neural lace to translate data from your brain to a computer and back. That sounds far out, and we've talked about the possibility of this kind of stuff, but it sounds like the first big player who's really putting some time and money into this. Yeah, well, you know, he's doing all sorts of things like that, talking about commercial space travel, colonies on Mars. He's really in at that level with his thinking. Well, Tim, you're reading a science fiction book that kind of deals with that premise, aren't you? Yeah, I'm... I'm reading a series. Um, I'm on the third book of the Nexus series, and it's not. A, it doesn't have a neural lace in the same way that Elon is talking about, which we'll get into. The, the premise of the book is that there's some nanotechnology that can go into the brain, attach to nerve cells, and communicate by radio waves to share your thoughts with other people, and then goes on to create operating system on that where you can control your own neurons, and in some cases others. So this is pretty interesting. Let's talk about let's let's start from the beginning then. What is this neural lace? The neural lace is going to be silicon that we're going to be able to inject into a person's brain and it's it's a fairly non-invasive. I mean, it is going into your brain. It's going to be able to in very fine detail read neural impulses. So at least that's the premise. Right. And he's talking about putting it mainly over your frontal cortex. All your Conscious or rational thought would be translated by this neural lace and then transmitted to devices. I wonder what happens to all my irrational thoughts. Maybe it'll come out in the, in the wash. Those are all in your lizard brain, Brian. I, I guess we'll see once we're able to upgrade to this. What makes a person a person, not just an ant roving around following scent trails to sugar, is just that the two outer millimeters of our brain. A very lengthy article, 38,000 words, was written by Tim Urban of Wait But Why. And Tim Urban goes into detail about what makes the human brain special and why, why all this is important. And I started reading this article, but I kind of gave up when I realized that he didn't really have anything but speculation. And really, neither do we. I don't think anybody does it. At this point, I, I think the entirety of this concept is Elon Musk said that he wants to do this, and then everybody speculated. Right. I think unless your work badge says Neuralink on it, you know about as much as the rest of us. Elon Musk said he's going to be contributing a single-digit percentage of his time to this, which amounts to a f- a few times a month or a few times a quarter, that's actually really significant. And with the amount of money he's got, this can go places. This can be something pretty spectacular in no time. Yeah, a single digit percentage of his time, but he could, com- I mean, it could be a 10 digit amount of money that he puts into this. Mm-hmm. So that's huge. And I suspect it will be because he's not, he doesn't seem to be going at this half-assed. To me, this this makes sense. I mean, we talk about this all the time, Brian. We talk about how technology is getting smaller and closer. And eventually, especially for us, we already have it inside of our body. And it's small, mm-hmm. you know, miniaturized chips inside our body. So this seems like a natural progression to me. And that's what Tim Urban was saying, is that this, this is almost overdue. Language evolved such a long time ago, and it hasn't changed. We're still communicating at the speed of speech and everything else has increased you know we used to be able to travel across the country in in months and now we can do it in an afternoon 
why is why is speech so far behind? Well, in some ways, we are shortening it with text messages. You see, you know, abbreviations and shortened words. So we are kind of shortening it in that way, Lol. which you may or may not agree with or even understand. I don't know what half of the acronyms that it, that some of these some people type into a text machine. I mean, is this Neuralink feasible? Is one question I have. I mean, injecting into the brain, we don't do that very often. Right now, we do right. have, there are some people with in electrodes implanted and using electrical stimulation to activate neurons. So it's not mm-hmm. that much of a stretch. Right. And the current technology is is bulky. It's external. It usually has to be hooked to a very big computer. It's, it's, hard, it's far from an iPhone. And I don't think we're talking about straying from that too far at this point. No, it uses the same technology. He's focused on this neural mesh, but that doesn't really mean anything to the external devices yet. So that hasn't that's a point that hasn't been addressed. Fair enough. One of the reasons that this really excites me is because Elon Musk could be upgrading stock humans to the mainstream. Currently the only people who upgrade with kind of the extreme procedures are the grinders. You know, we've got magnets in our fingers, we've got RFID, lights under the skin, and that and that's far from mainstream. One of the things, and I get, and I'm, you know, my mind's on this because I'm reading some books on it, is if you can translate for a machine, that machine can then transmit to another n- neural lace. So in some ways, this could result in a, a, a form of telepathy, where mm-hmm. I'm thinking nearly directly into the brain of people I'm connected to. Oh my gosh. That's huge. That <sighs> I it's amazingly huge. I mean, we're talking group consciousness at that point. We're talking mm-hmm. sharing of med, uh, mental resources. Maybe it could get to the point and this again, this is all speculation. Maybe it could get to the point of where we can pool our working memory, things like that. It's bound to create a whole new set of solutions for problems that we have not been able to solve at this point. Problems that might not be able to be solved in a single lifetime. Stuff that, you know, where we need to be able to integrate the knowledge of a mechanical engineer and a neurologist and an electrical and all these things, they could meet in a room for an afternoon and have the expertise of all of those brains working in tandem. With the speed we can transmit data, they wouldn't have to be even in the same room. That's true. You could do this something like, I mean, the the concept of this, you could do that over the internet with very little lag. I kind of like the idea of having to be in the same room and maybe you have to hold hands to do it just for that, you know, sense of togetherness. I, I like the idea of being like, oh, we need to have peace talks in, in between these countries. And like, okay, the leaders have to hold hands. <laughs> maybe that's where the link can be. You can put little electrodes in your hands so you can transmit the data. Or the lips. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I do what I can. He's talking about using silicon, and I think that that's getting to be kind of outdated. We do have other, we're, we're, we're using other materials to store data now and to transmit data. Oh, uh, this is hopefully going to get caught up in Moore's Law real quick, and we'll have something user-friendly go oh, within our lifetimes, I hope. User-friendly to inject into your brain? Well. I, I not, I'm, I, I'm. I'm pretty gutsy, Brian, but I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to stick a needle into my brain. Well, you can just go through the eyeball. Right. No problem. If this becomes half of what we hope for, it's going to be just a new era. I, everything that the, – the way we approach life could be drastically altered. It's, it's going to make everything else seem old-fashioned. And we're mainly talking about transmitting data out of your brain. So the, the value of transmitting it of receiving that data is huge because you know these articles that we're reading that we have read we took time to do that in this sort of with this sort of system you could just absorb this data at a pretty fast rate this is specifically an episode of the outer limits but here's something else because when i speak i have to translate my ideas into words, which requires a different part of the brain than what we're talking about this neural lace being over. 
if I have this neural lease directly over where that thought is happening, it's before the point where it's been turned into language. If I'm using this neural lease on my cortex, it bypasses my language center in my brain. So it skips the step of creating language to transmit to other people through sound. So I wonder if that's going to bypass the filter that we use when we speak. Just that like, oh, I am flirting with this pretty lady. I should probably not transmit the thought of looking down her shirt. <laughs> that's an interesting question, isn't it? I probably shouldn't have asked it, but... Something to be careful of. To hell with filtering myself. Obviously. Mmm, coffee. <laughs> well, now we're short-circuiting the language function and transmitting the idea data. We don't know what that means. I mean, we, we have no idea what that means. I mean, we're so used to hearing ideas as language and, and transmitting, you know, communicating with language that we don't even have any idea what it would be like to do this. Oh, when I think of my own thoughts just throughout the, the day, I kind of step back and look at what I'm thinking. I'm like, God, oh, that's a freaking mess. Well, I think a lot of the mess comes after the idea. I mean, because you have that, that spark of inspiration. Then there's all kinds of things to detract you from that. And I'm just guessing at this point, but I think if you were able to directly read off of the cortex, you would have a much more pure data source. Now, I'm not a neurologist. I don't think you are either, Tim. I am not a neurologist, but I do play one on the radio. I encourage our listeners to look it up. Is this the future? Will Neuralink save us from death by AI or could it bring about a new age of humanity? Or maybe we'll just lose all privacy whatsoever and people will stop giving a shit about sex tapes. I would love that, Brian. I want that so badly. <laughs> I want people to stop caring about my sex. Cut. We want to hear from you. We invite you, our listeners, to email us at cyborgs at twocyborgs.com or you can shoot either of us an email at tim at twocyborgs.com or brian at twocyborgs.com. Or, better yet, use the comments wherever you listen to this. On biohack.me, on iTunes, Stitcher, any of those. We also have our own website. We're still in the process of updating it. The guy who's running that thing is super slow yeah. to, to update anything. That's twocyborgs.com. You can go to the merchandise section of the website and access our Cafe Press store where you can get all sorts of cool stuff. My dog actually ordered a shirt today. Oh, good for him. He's going to be so awesome. And I have one of the coffee cups. It's got uh, the two Cyborgs logo on the front, coffee not included. So this is Tim Shank. And this is Brian McAvoy. You've been listening to Two Cyborgs and a Microphone, brought to you by Two Cyborgs with Microphones. Like, follow, share, plus one, and don't forget to subscribe on any of the popular podcast services, including... Google Play Music, iTunes, and Stitcher. Help us move up the podcast ladder by subscribing and commenting on iTunes. Commenting is very important. And now Twitter! At Two Cyborgs. Oh, an exclamation point. I should take advantage of this. <laughs> All right.